Okay, what else is the Louisiana area famous for, John? Well, it's also famous for uh, for hot sauce. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and in fact, we actually have our own manufacturer of, of hot sauce as part of our ranks. Um, and who might that be? Well, he's one of our BD leads, uh, okay. and he's uh, he's on his second tour with the firm. He you know, uh -huh. he was here in the '90s, left, came, and is is back. I think he just finished his first year. Uh, and it, it, so, if you haven't guessed already who I'm talking about, it's Tom Hernandez. Uh, and Tom, you can you tell us a little bit about uh, your 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 hot sauce? I absolutely will. Thanks, AJ and Jock. Now, this hot sauce fits with either. Louisiana, New Orleans, Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras traditions, or even Super Bowl, which now is ancient history. But I've been doing it for about five years. I grow the peppers in my own backyard, and they're really a beautiful and colorful array of things. So if I can, I'll go straight to sharing my screen to show you what they look like, since you don't want to see what I look like. Let's see here. Well, Tom, you got that nice SMA banner in the background, so uh, it's all good. Everybody see that now? Yes, we can, yeah. Okay, so I grow, all of these are grown in my backyard. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. And let me talk just a bit about them before I tell you what I really do with them, which is make sauces, which are dynamite. The picture on the left, you'll see at about three o'clock, orange peppers that ought to be familiar to you. Those are orange habaneros. You can find those in most grocery stores if you go to the right part of the, uh, of the produce aisle. And um, uh, above and uh, at 12 and six o'clock are variants of that, a red habanero and, and a chocolate habanero. Um, and on the left side of that same uh, left photo at nine o'clock are the peppers that are notorious called ghost peppers and Carolina reapers. Um, those are the ones that will put you in the hospital if you happen to eat them raw, which I do not recommend. <laughs> um, but you can do sauces with all of them. I'll show those in just a moment. Um, by the way, when I handle the ghost peppers and reapers, I handle them as if I were handling plutonium. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. So, and on the right picture there, you'll see uh, more traditionally shaped peppers of all colors. Uh, you'll see uh, red jalapenos, green jalapenos. The upper left is something called a Bulgarian carrot, and the upper right is something called Ethiopian brown. And I included them there for a reason. I wanted people to understand something that's important if you're a sauce maker like me. And that is that the flavor of the pepper, regardless of the heat, will be consistent with the color of the pepper. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> so so uh, a, green, a green pepper, like the ones there in the photograph, will have a tart flavor, maybe a bitter flavor. And the red ones will have a sweet flavor. And you can tell this if you go to your grocery store and just buy ordinary bell peppers, red and green, and concentrate on the flavor of the pepper you'll find the, the green ones are tart and the red ones are sweet. And that exactly corresponds to what you get in these hotter variants as well. So green is tart, a red is sweet. Orange tends to be a citrus flavor, believe it or not. And uh, brown is a smoky flavor. So isn't that interesting? Tart, sweet, citrus, and smoky. Let's go over and show you what you can do with them. These will be familiar to some SMNAers. You know who you are that have seen this and tasted this. Oh, these are sauces, um, it's, it, they're all phenomenal. <laughs> these are sauces I've made at home. Um, the sauce on the left is has a habanero base, and because it's fruity, the I add mango to it amongst other ingredients. Um, it is dynamite on fish, absolutely delicious on fish if you like heat. The um, second from the left, the red sauce is what I just call the uh, taco shop hot sauce. It has red peppers and a tomato base. is great with chips and breakfast. The third one from the left, the green sauce is uh, hatch chilies. And I add to that uh, green tomatillos, which are a bitter tomato-ish fruit. And uh, again, it's good on chew with chips or with breakfast. Uh, <laughs> and, and the one on the far right is a brown sauce, which is very smoky. And I add to that, uh, basically add to that molasses, brown sugar, and dark mustard, a little bit. Mm. And it is... It is, it is wonderful. It is best with fried chicken, believe it or not. Delicious. You know, hey, Tom, but what I like the best, and I don't think you featured this here unless I'm mistaken, is the, the one that's more Peruvian, which was hot, but it was, uh, was that was fantastic. It's coming up, Jock, and here you go. <laughs> this is the one Jock's talking about. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, so, and just to prove the thought that the very hot peppers are not to be wasted, I made this sauce using four ghost peppers and a few other ingredients, in this particular case, cilantro, um, mayonnaise, and sour cream. And it is, if you can stand the heat, 
absolutely dynamite with steak. Well, you know what they say, Thomas, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Get out of the kitchen. <laughs> So, you know, you can do anything with these things. Gardening is good for the soul. I believe it as well, especially in COVID times when you want to get out for 15 minutes and get some sun. It, making sauces also makes for great stories at cocktail parties and good stories too. And final point, I would never be doing this and wouldn't even be here if I hadn't tried them out on my own boss, Jock Keats, and he loved them. So <laughs> that's all, everybody. Thank you very much for getting a chance to share this with you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Thanks. How early do we have to put our order in, Tom? <laughs> For you aging anytime. <laughs>